Hello all, so we're going to do another video for you today. We're going to be using our brand new release that we launched on Crate and Craft this week. And um, we've got the Corner Garden Stamp Set and Wildlife Flourish. So let's have a quick nosy at what we're going to be doing. So here we go. So we are using, cord both of these are our 8 99 stamp sets. So we've got Corner Garden Flourish, um, which has got the larger stamp in the middle. And then these elements, you can either use these elements in here now they've been designed so they're not a perfect fit for those of us that try so hard to get these things lined up they are designed not to fit perfectly just to add the color kind of off off center if that makes sense um so we've got some couple of hearts we've got some of the flowers we've got a couple of the leaves and the buds um and a row of three hearts here and then we've got the wildlife flourish so on with this particular card we're actually only going to be using the wildlife parts of it a couple of the butterflies rather than the whole flourish but it just shows you how all of them work together um, so they're the two stamps we're going to be using we're also going to be using um, distress oxides in shaded lilac festive berries squeezed lemonade twisted citron and picked raspberry our sticky glue our crystal clear embossing powder we're also going to be using the versafine onyx black and blending brushes so let's get this cleared away. Actually, I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll take this off and then I can show you these stamps a little bit closer. So this is what I mean. We've got the big, huge stamp here, which takes up the full size. And then these pieces are designed to go inside here, but not to stamp as a perfect fit. They are designed not to stamp as a perfect fit. We're actually gonna be coloring today, but I'll show you as well what I mean maybe as well so that you can see separately and then this is the um, wildlife flourish so we've got all the different we've got sort of a couple of hummingbirds we've got one different butterflies uh, just to add a little bit of interest to them so they're the two sets of stamps the sticky glue in the two sizes so we've got the what 30 mil and 120 mil then we have as I said the crystal clear embossing powder along with our versafine onyx black ink and the distress oxides in five colours. So we have got shaded lilac, festive berries, squeezed lemonade, twisted citron, and picked raspberry today. So I'm going to slide those up out of the way. Um, just so that you know, in case I mention it, forget to mention it later, the sentiment we're using on today's card is from um, the Fragrant Sun stamp set from our last release as well. So hope that makes some sense as I said we're going to be painting these today rather than inking the stamp out uh, just to show you something a little bit different so we need an 8x8 eight eight card we've also got a card piece of black cardstock cut in seven and three quarters it is literally just going to show the tiniest little edge around there and then one piece of white cardstock um, I'm using just plain Anna Marie super smooth cardstock um, but you can use whatever cardstock you have. I do find the super smooth, this particular super smooth is really, really good. You can buy it, it's 25 sheets on our website as well. Um, we are using water and brushes, so you may find watercolour cardstock works better for you. The choice is yours, um, that's entirely up to you. So that's all we need for this card. It's a quick, easy one today, we hope. I'm going to try and cut this one down so it's not a huge, long... Um, video I've been trying to cut the videos down and I'm not succeeding very well am I so first of all we've got our large stamp I'm going to take these bracelets off because they're going to drive me as insane as they are you um, and we're just going to ink this stamp up lots of little light taps and then we're going to position we're going to do the first one in the middle now I want this to come off the bottom so that it looks like it's meant to, it's coming from the bottom. And it's quite a big stamp, so just make sure that you've pressed hard all over so that that image comes out properly. And then we're gonna go back in. In fact, no, we're not. We're gonna put the embossing powder on first. The thing I always tell you about, make sure you get your embossing powder on quickly. with that particular ink, because it doesn't really like embossing powder. Um, bear with me when I get my... There we go. We have 
way of view earlier, so I'll just embossing, crystal clear embossing powder all over the top. Pop that back in the pot, and then we're going to ink it up again, and we're going to do one either side. I got that all inked up, so we're gonna, just going to try that again. I threw myself off a little bit there, didn't I? That wasn't very clever of me. Um, be careful, we have got black ink around the edge of this, and it's quite a white card. You don't want black ink all around the edge of your stamp if you're going to be stamping on and keeping it quite a clean, simple card. But that's where the wildlife flourish comes in handy. Because if you do get an ink smudge on here, you can quite easily cover it up with a butterfly or a hummingbird, which is always really clever. Very handy to have. Obviously, I haven't heated that um, the first time that I've put the embossing powder on, and I'm not going to heat the second one. Um, so just be a little bit careful that you're not going to be knocking that powder off the images that you've already popped the powder on to. all you need when you're stamping an image out hey so then we're going to go in with the final one on the other side lots of little light taps again take the excess off around the edges and I just find it easier to spin it round and stamp it like that rather than that's where it's going to land because I dropped it So that's where that image is going to be. There we go. That was a good save, actually. It was, could have could have got messy, that one. And again, embossing powder straight on there. Don't give it a good flick like I would normally tell you to do with embossing powder to take the excess off. Because, as I said, this particular powder... Um, Ink doesn't like embossing powder very much, so you have to be careful not to knock too much of the powder off. This is the one that we heat from underneath, so bear with me a second. Nearly there, it starts to move a bit quicker once it, the, the card stop starts to get warmer. Um, otherwise, it takes a little while because there's obviously not huge amounts of detail on here, so it takes a little bit longer to get through them for some reason. change on my heat gun. <laughs> I need to work out how to speed this up, this, this part of our videos up, so that you don't have to watch it all going. But, okay. <laughs> So there we go, our finished stamped out image. I'm just going to give that a little bit of a wiggle to try and put the cardstock back as flat as possible. So I do that while the cardstock is still warm. It does help, it won't go completely flat straight away, but it does help. So there's our three images um, 
stamped out. I'm just going to pop that to one side because I have worked ahead of myself a little bit on this one and I've already coloured some of these. So as I've said to you um, at the start, we're not actually going to use these um, images, the additional sections to this stamp. So this stamp comes with, what have I done with it? There we go. Um, so this stamp comes with all these little extra pieces. On the one that I'm making, I'm going to be painting it with um, the Distress Oxide. So I just wanted to show you how these little stamps work. So we're going to take the ink. A second. We're going to ink our stamp up. And we're going to position it on here. And it has been designed so it's not a perfect fit. Can we see? So we go over up here, we come slightly smaller down here, it doesn't quite fit here. Um, it just depends how you position it as to how well it will um, stamp the within the flower itself. But as I've said, it is designed to be kind of off. I don't want, that's exactly the whole idea of it was for people like me that get really worked up when they're not, when they're supposed to fit and they don't. Um, this was done so that, that we don't get worked up over things like that because it's not meant to. It is supposed to do exactly that. Okay? So hopefully that will put lots of your minds at rest. And again, as I say, we've got lots of different, there's lots of different pieces to this stamp. Um, this set, so you've got the hearts. Let's pop in a couple of red hearts just to show you. Cardinal Sin, taking my stamp to my ink pad, not my ink pad to my stamp, and that's what happens. We don't get it inked properly. So again, completely random, not meant to fit. It's just to give a little bit of an accent to it rather than them be um, the perfect fit. I'm very good at taking lots of inks and lids and throwing them all around my place, so um, I'll try and be a bit tidier. So do what you're supposed to do and take your ink to your stamp. Again, it's not a perfect fit. We seem to have everybody deciding that to, right now, while I'm recording this video, is the time to move everything around. We've had lorries, we've had tractors, all sorts go past this, after, this evening. So, um, oh, afternoon. So I can only apologise for that. Um, I'll get it put in their schedule that we're videoing at this time. Next time, and maybe they won't follow. <laughs> so that's the idea of these. Um, so hopefully... That will make sense to everybody. Um, we'll just do a couple of red hearts at the top there just to finish this one off. So that's the kind of look that these stamps are designed to achieve. We've also got the leaves in there as well if you want to pop the leaves in. We've got the buds there. Um, let's be quick how we're doing. 15 minutes in. I'm just going to try and make this a really quick video. So hopefully we're not going to take up too much time. And again, just to pop the leaves in. quite well look I've got all three leaves in for this one and that takes the colour all the way up even down to the tiny little bud that's on here as well and make that
So as I say, it's supposed to be a random, have fun and stop worrying about the fact they're not perfect kind of stamp set. Uh, so that gives you just an idea of what you can do with the individual pieces. Now we'll go back to what our finished card is going to look like. So you've seen that style. We're now going to come back in with what the finished card is going to look like. So we are going to paint this using Distress Oxides. So I'm just going to put my colours down on the on here just to save us some time as we're going along. Hopefully I'll behave and not get everything covered in it. I'm not going to guarantee it because I'm quite good at not doing as I'm supposed to, as you all know. Um, what colour am I missing? Red. Festive berries. So I have coloured some of this, as you can see, or painted some of this before um, we came to recording. Uh, so you need a piece of kitchen paper. And I'm just going to wet the brush. I don't want my brush super, super wet. So I'm just going to take the excess off. And then I'm going to pick up some colour, and I'm actually going to make my main flower yellow, just to add a bit of, make it slightly different. And literally, I'm just scribbling on. This is smooth cardstock; it's not watercolour cardstock, um, so you don't want to completely saturate this card. It will take a certain amount of water, but it won't take the same amount of water that watercolour would take. One yellow flower. I'm going to pick up some green and do the leaves. Same thing. We're not completely. The the brush isn't soaking wet. It's just got um. It's damp rather than soaking wet. So I'm going to go in and colour all of our leaves. So that's using the twisted citron. So if you are somebody that wants it to be perfect then you won't be using the add-on stamps for this. You'll be using your paintbrush and or inks or whatever you've got that you would like to, to use. So just colour some of these flowers in. And because we've embossed it, it helps you stay in the lines as well, which is very handy if you're not particularly good at doing that. going to paint our little buds as well. I have some pink ones and then we want the, I want my lilac to be slightly heavier. I did do the lilac ones ahead of schedule but I might go in and make those a little bit darker. There we go. So with oxides if you want the colour darker just let them dry and then go in and paint over the top again and it will give you a stronger colour. Once it's got to its true colour, that's where it will stay. You won't be able to make them any darker. And then we're going to colour our hearts in. Look how quiet I go when I start painting. That's terrible. I go in my own little world. Nobody else is around when I start painting. It's not a good thing to do when you're doing a demo video, really, is it? I'm supposed to tell you what I'm doing and why I'm doing it. But um, I'm not wetting the brush anymore each time I'm adding more ink to this. I'm just picking up some more ink at the moment. You'll know when you need to add more water to your brush with this. They struggle to move across the paper. Um, so unless you need to add, it will let you know when you need to add more water to it. It's not going to tell you, but it will tell you, if that makes sense. So we're just colouring this in. Almost finished. Now this one is one of those types of cards that really don't take very long to do. Um, so it's quite a nice one to maybe stamp and emboss it, have a few ready to go and just colour it in in the colours you want as and when you need it. Or want to sit in front of the telly and do. Now, the reason I've gone over there, it's a dry piece of kitchen paper and literally where the oxide has touched the 
embossing powder, it can dull it down a little bit and I want those pieces to still shine. So I'm just going over where I've painted it really, really lightly and just rubbing off any excess um, oxides that may be sat on top of that embossing powder. And that's that done. Now, the reason we've got the Wildlife F Flourish stamp set with us is, do you remember I said, if you make a mistake or if you stick your finger in it and then you've got a black smudge on it or you make you smudge your painting as you're going along, you can use the tiny little pieces that are on the Flourish set. You remember we all say butterflies get added to so much stuff. Well, that's exactly what you can do with this. Now, I've been actually been quite good with this one and haven't done that. But I am going to add in a couple of the little butterflies just to, to show you. Okay. So I'm going to take a couple of butterflies and some versifying on this black. Did you see I stuck my finger in something there and made a nice little mark on there? Oh, I didn't want to do that. We're going to have a butterfly on here too. Wasn't what I had planned at all, but hey ho, that's what's happened. So that's what you got. So we have our butterflies on there, and again, if you want to colour them in, you can. Um, I don't really know what coloured butterflies would be, but we're going to add some colour to these. Really don't do what I've just done. Pop your ink down, just a small amount of ink, just to pick enough up to do your butterflies. I'm very cross with myself for dropping that. But I'm not going to go back and do this whole video just because I dropped an ink pad. You'll all understand what we finished article is going to be. And we got a butterfly, probably where we wouldn't have wanted one, but I might have even 3D'd that butterfly to cover up where I dropped that. I'm going to do. I am going to stamp that butterfly onto a piece of cardstock and we're going to cut it out and 3D it. So we're winging it now, ladies and gentlemen. Let me find my stamp that I just used. Where did I put that butterfly that I just dropped? It doesn't want me to redo it, obviously. I can't even find the stamp that I've just used. What did we do with it? Ah, found it. So we're going to stamp this out. Colour it in. It probably won't have antennae, I have to say, when I've cut this out, but I think it'll look better than just having that um, flower stamped on there like it is. I should, we should have probably had a couple of these stamped out ready, just in case that happened. But it did, and it's live, and there's not a thing I can do about it. So, this is how we'll recover it. We're 
just going to fold his wings up, pop a little bit of glue on here. That looks much better than it just being stamped on there. Even though it is stamped on there as well, because obviously it dropped on there. It just adds a bit of dimension there. Hey, that actually worked out quite well in the end. Quite like it. So we will put those all away. I'm going to just quickly wipe my hands because I, I've got black ink on them. And we can spread that a long way, as you've just seen. And then we are going to just go around the edge with our oxides and just fade the edges of this out so it's not quite so stark. Um, I think I'm going to use yellow for this. So we're just going to take our brush, load the brush up with some ink, and I want it to be quite subtle, so I'm really, really working that ink. In fact, I might even take a piece of kitchen paper and just dab the, uh, the excess off there because I really want this to be a real subtle hint. And these brushes are perfect for that. I don't want it to be really clean cut. I should probably not be touching that card quite as much as I am, but I am, so... That's the problem when you choose to do really clean cut cards, isn't it? You um, can do exactly what I just did. But I think we did okay. I think that butterfly looks quite cute on there, actually. This just kind of grounds the stamp, if that makes sense, rather than it being completely stark white which I'm not looking I like a stark white card but just for something a little different around the edges yeah so again I'm just going to go and buff where that embossing powder is just to keep it shiny so where that oxide ink went on there we're just keeping it real take the excess ink off there Normally I would load that onto my brush or onto my pad um, that I use for the blending if I'm using the blending pads because it seems a bit of a waste of ink but I'm conscious of time again we're running off on this one. So we're just going to layer this on here. And it is a really, really little thin line that we have with this one around the edge for the white. And then we've got the sentiment, which it comes from the fragrance sun stamp set that we launched last month. And this one says, bear with me while I some glue on the back so we've got the foam pad on here so I'm just popping some glue which allows me to have a little bit of wiggle room so this one says a birthday is just the first day of another 365 day journey around the sun enjoy the trip and so we're going to try and get this in the center here roughly in the middle there we go and there we have it our finished card. 
So let me clear some of this out of the way. I've managed to spread lot myself around a lot now. Um, and we can go in and have a look at a few other cards that have been made with this particular set of stamps. So this one has had the tiny little hearts that are in this set as well, added all the way around the edge um, and layered up on top. And then I'm not sure who made this one, but it's topped and tailed. So we've got the original image stamped out as normal and then twisted around and come in just a section of it off the top, which I think looks really nice. Then we have another one. This is using, um, I think this was coloured with clean colour pens. It's also got one of our new elements from the background element set across the bottom for it to sit on as well. Uh, then this one again, um, got a topper on the top there, the hearts been individually across the banner. Uh, it looks like it's been coloured with oxides as well. Oh, sorry didn't want to bring that one on at all that's the one I wanted um, and then this one has just been mirrored um, which I think looks really clever as well <clears throat> this one is very similar to the one we've just done <coughs> excuse me um, I'm not 100% sure who did this one I think it might have been Tina but I'm not sure um, again just different colors so we've used blues and yellows rather than the pinks and uh, lilacs here this one's had a watercolour brushed across the back first and then just stamped and embossed. I think it's really effective. Another one, again, it's been mirrored there as well as um, being done in its normal face forwards way. This one's been coloured with pencils. And then this one's been done onto chrome, uh, chrome, onto craft card, um, coloured with or stamped with black ink and coloured in with black and white. And it's also got one of our other um, stamps from this release called Cascading Flowers on there as well. So it shows you how they all work so well together. <coughs> Excuse me. And then another clean and simple one here. Um, and the main flower on here has also been um, decoupaged, so cut out a couple of times. So that blue flower that's on there has been cut out a couple of times and um, layered up. <coughs> Got a frog in my throat all of a sudden. So I hope you've all enjoyed that video. Thankfully, we managed to recover where I dropped that butterfly. Uh, see, it happens to us all. So I'm just going to go through quickly again what it was we've used for this. Um, uh, let me grab these pieces out. And here we go. So we have used the Wildlife Flourish. We've also used the Corner Garden stamp set. We've used Distress Oxides in Picked Raspberry, Twisted Citron, Squeezed Lemonade, Festive Berries and Shaded Lilac. We've also used the Versify and Onyx Black. We've used Crystal Clear Embossing Powder, the Blending Brushes um, and our Sticky Glue, Honeydew Craft Sticky Glue. So as I say, I hope you've all, oh, yeah, there we go. Hope you've all enjoyed um, watching today's video. Uh, if you've got any questions or if there's anything particular you'd like us to show, please feel free to email us at honeydewcrafts at gmail.com or you can send us a message via Facebook or email us or message us through our website, honeydewcrafts.co.uk. Hope you've all enjoyed it. Let's bring you quickly back to see the finished card um, with our little 3D butterfly on there. Um, have a lovely evening and we will see you all again soon. Thanks very much. Bye.